Hello, Tungsten Miner here. Today I'm going to talk about taking dangerous trips, and in particular taking trips to the nether. I got a request for how I do that and how I get ready for such a trip. So I'm going to go show you through my process. So at the moment, I've taken off all of my gear. So this is my character as he starts out with nothing at all in his inventory, except the things I'm going to use to get myself ready for making that first trip. So to start off with, I like to use the Tinker's Construct stuff. Uh, it provides a nice uh, set of options, it is very extensible, uh, it gives you some nice potion effects and things on a permanent basis, so it's, I think, the best armor in the game that I wind up using almost all the way through the entire game. The one exception being that I like to use the uh, Simply Jetpack's uh, Jetpack in combination with the Thermal Expansion armor. But that's a really, really difficult item to create. It takes a tremendous amount of resources, so I generally don't start off with that. Instead, I start off with the Tinker's Construct Traveler's Gear. So let's take a look at some of the recipes here. They're usually uh, really, really easy. So the goggles are just a little bit of glass, some gold, some leather. The vest requires uh, a piece of aluminum, but everything else is stuff that you'll come across pretty easily. The wings are the hardest element to make because you need that ender pearl and you also need some bronze and a little bit of gold. And the boots are just leather with a little bit of aluminum. So in this game, uh, remember that I've got all this custom ore gen. So aluminum only shows up way far to the south. And it made things a little difficult to get going with my traveler's uh, armor because I had to go make that big journey. In order to make that journey, I needed a way to get very far south, which meant a lot of stuff preceded my getting to this set of armor. Finally, though, I managed to make it all. So I'm going to uh, grab all of these things off the rack. Now I've also added a bit to them. So in my goggles, I went ahead and added the stuff necessary to give myself night vision, which is really, really useful when you're in the nether. Uh, I've also given it auto repair, which means that any damage you take, it's going to correct over time. Uh, so you can see there's no damage on this armor now, and I've certainly been hit a bunch. Uh, it also has the ability to zoom, but I haven't actually added that to this because I don't really need it. Traveler's Vest lets you have swift swim, and that's one of its natural features. Uh, and then I added the auto repair. Traveler's Wings, you get the high jump automatically, so you can jump two blocks instead of one. And I added Auto Repair and Feather Fall. And the Traveler's Boots, I've got High Step, which is the ability to automatically step up one meter. But I haven't added any other abilities. And you can actually see what all the abilities are uh, just by looking in the book that you get when you start off. And all the way in the back here are all of the extras that you can add. So colored, uh, colored, a uh, golden carrot, flint and steel, and a potion of night vision will give you night vision on your goggles. Uh, you can get perfect dodge, which makes it so that it's less likely when a monster would have made contact that it actually does any damage. Uh, stealth means if you stand still, the monsters will ignore you. Uh, feather fall makes it so that uh, when you jump off to of someplace high, you fall um, kind of at the same speed that a chicken does. You, know, you don't fall fast enough to actually do any damage. Water walk lets you walk on water, what you'd expect. Lead boots lets you sink in water. Obviously these are incompatible things, you kind of have to pick one. But if you do a lot of diving, for example, these might come really in handy. Whereas if you do a lot of walking around and you don't want to swim but you want to get across the water, instead of using a boat, you might use these. Uh, slimy Souls, uh, I think this is so that you don't take quite as much damage. It's not Feather Fall, you fall as fast as normal, but when you hit the ground, you take less damage. Uh, the Glove is another one of the items here, just a little bit of leather. Uh, and you get um, basically no extensions to anything with the Glove except the ability to add redstone to it. And the more redstone you add, the faster whatever tool you're using will work. You can put redstone on the tool itself directly, but then it's only on that tool. If you put it on your gloves, then you get it for every tool. And you can still put it on the tool and get faster still. So this is absolutely one of the first things that I make, and I 
pour in as much redstone as it will take. Uh, it makes all of your tools so much faster. Why wouldn't you? Uh, this is how you get auto repair, is this uh, little bit of um, moss. And you can make the moss by taking a uh, 3x3 three three of mossy cobblestone. And that will craft into one piece of moss. Uh, double jump, I don't know how this works. Uh, it sounds cool, and I've tried it a few times, but I've never actually gotten it to work. So if somebody figures out how do you actually do the double jumping, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments and let me know how it works. And that's it. That's the last of the extensions you can add to the Tinker's Construct armor. So not everything can be applied to everything, and certain ones are special. Uh, but still, they're amazing additions, especially the night vision I use a lot, and the Featherfall, of course. Okay, so I'm all kitted out in my first level armor. Let's talk about this uh, Flux Infused Jet Plate. Uh, this is very, very high-end stuff. I mean, you can see it stores 60 million RF in the armor. So it's uh, not something you're going to be using early game. You need some pretty serious power systems to generate it. Uh, and the recipe is uh, really, really complicated. I think it's like 80-something steps, and you need lots of electrum and iron and uh, uh, all sorts of materials. I mean, these cryotheum units, you need the gelid cryotheum to make. Uh, which is itself not easy to come by. You need to find lots of blizzes to get the blizz powder. Um, making this resonant flux pack is also, you know, you need a lot of endarium, which means you need lots of ender, which means you also need lots of shiny um, metal. Uh, yeah, so producing this stuff, you need shiny metal, and you need four ender pearls per bucket. Uh, so that's pretty complicated. And of course, in order to even get that far, you need to have already made one of these which means you need to make one of these. Yeah, I won't go through all the recipes. Um, if you want to check things out, go to uh, my other website, crafting guide, crafting-guide.com, and you can see how complicated these things are to make. Suffice to say, I made this in a little bit at a time because you can make the resonant jetpack and just use that as a jetpack by itself. And I even started out by making this reinforced jetpack first and then upgraded it. To the resonant jetpack and that's one of the super nice things about the simply jetpacks mod is you can start out with just the simple leadstone jetpack only requires 80,000 RF it doesn't go very fast and it won't take you very far because it runs out of fuel pretty darn quick but you can fly at least a little and then when you're ready and you've got the materials um, you can upgrade it into a hardened jetpack by basically going through the process of building the extra stuff and using your jetpack as one of the ingredients. And it will carry over any power that happens to be in there too. So if you've already charged it up, you won't lose that. And this one goes faster and can store more energy, will take you further. You can use that to upgrade to reinforced, you can use that to upgrade to resonant, you can use that to upgrade to resonant armored, and finally you can upgrade that to jet and flu uh, flux infused jet plate, which uses the flux infused chest plate uh, which is actually rather easy to make. You just need to make lots of this fluxed armor stuff, which, uh, you know, fluxed electrum is uh, not too hard to come by. Uh, da, 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 yeah, here we go. So just take electrum, use your fluid transporter to put some destabilized redstone on it, and that gets you the fluxed electrum blend. And these crystals are just uh, a diamond with more redstone put on them. So electrum diamonds, make some of these panels. Once you've got the panels, you can make the chest plate. And uh, you notice it uses the standard shape for making a chest plate in general. And all of the rest of the flux-infused armor does the same thing. And the big advantage of flux-infused armor is that while it provides the same protection as diamond armor, I don't notice it uses a lot of diamonds, uh, much, you know, twice as many diamonds as normal diamond armor, it doesn't actually break you can just charge it up again. So as you get hit, it drains the charge, and then you just put the charge back on, and you're ready to go. It's one of the ingredients in flux-infused jet plate. You basically take your jet pack, and you take your flux armor, and you smash them together, and you get this armor instead. So I'm going to uh, put aside my traveler's vest in favor of this, because it provides a lot of protection, and of course, flying, which is terrific. OK, so I've got my armor. Let's talk about weapons. Now, there's a lot of choices, especially with Tinker's Construct, as to what weapons you use. But generally, you need to have one of 
a close-up weapon and a distance weapon. So my close-up weapon is a cleaver, and my distance weapon is a crossbow. So let's go upstairs here, and I will show how to make those using Tinker's Construct from very simple materials. Now, of course, if you use more um, powerful materials, you'll get more powerful weapons. So let's, for example, take a look at uh, Materials in U Volume 2 and look at our various simple tools. And if you keep going through, you get to the materials. I know I've talked about this in a previous video, so I won't go into it at length. But you can see durability, handle modifier, full tool durability, mining speed, and so on. All of those things keep getting better and better as you use more and more uh, durable materials. So uh, slime, for example, is great for handles. Uh, Ardite, copper, maniolin is usually the best metal in most games, although some mods add other metals that are even better. But you can see the durability is tremendously improved and its speed and capability. So whatever materials you've got, um, upgrade to the most powerful ones you can and check out this book to see which are better than which other ones. So to get started here, let's say I want to make my crossbow first. I'm going to come into my tool forge, which is the same thing as this tool station, except upgraded. And I talked about that before. I should check one of my previous videos to see how that works. And I want to make a crossbow. So I need a bow, a crossbow bow. I need a crossbow stock. I need a heavy um, cross piece. And I need a bowstring. So I'm going to come over to my part builder and start making my parts. My Bowstring template is here. It needs three string. So now I've got my bowstring. Take that out. I need my crossbow bow. Uh, where's my crossbow bow? It's got to be in here someplace. There we go, crossbow limb. And I'm going to make everything out of wood because I got lots of wood, but you almost certainly wouldn't want to make this out of wood. It's going to make a very bad crossbow. So really use whatever materials you've got at hand. Here's my crossbow body. And you notice this uses five, the crossbow bow uses four, the string uses three. So you can expect to need uh, a stack of materials uh, that's pretty full up to get everything you need. Uh, and then the last thing I need was a tough binding. Okay, so now I've got all my pieces for my bow here. I'm going to go back to my tool forge, pick that guy, and start filling in all of my pieces in their slots. And in the end, I get myself a wooden crossbow, which is none too impressive in its statistics, but I'll show you the nice one that I made myself later. Okay, what do you need with crossbows? Well, you need crossbow bolts. So let's go down to the smeltery and talk about crossbow bolts. Every bolt is made with a uh, tool rod, you know, the thin tool rod, which has some metal poured over top of it. Now of course one of the possible tool rods is just a plain old stick. And that's what I'm going to use here. Ahead of time I've dropped some bronze in here and melted things down. It looks like that armor is not melting. Oh well. Uh, so I've got not enough bronze to get everything working. So I'm going to go grab some more bronze and toss it in here and uh, be back in a minute. All right, here's more bronze. That one's just about to finish melting. There we go. So now one ingot and a half. And since I've got my tool rod in the form of a stick already in the casting table, I'm just going to pour out some bronze over top of it. One thing I forgot was that I think you actually do need the uh, tool rod to be a tool rod. So sticks and tool rods look identical, but they're actually not quite the same. So now that I've got my tool rod, I'm going to head back downstairs. All right, now throw that in there and pour out some bronze. Here we go. Now we've got a wooden bolt. That's not quite ready yet. We need to add on some fletching. So let's head back upstairs and do that. Okay, here we are back at our tool forge. I'm going to select the bolts. I'm going to drop the unfletched bolt on the top. And now I need to make some fletching. Back over here to my part builder. Change this out for my fletching pattern. Drop that in there. 
grab my fletching, back over to my tool forage, and add in the fletching. There's a lot of different materials you can use for all of the pieces, including the fletching. Um, so, for example, the leaves from the slime trees that Tinker's Construct adds make very good fletching. Um, the different properties of the different materials affect things differently. So your crossbow bow piece made out of slime is very springy and stretchy and makes a very good crossbow bow, whereas you want something much more rigid and sturdy for the body. So maniolin or metals of some kind would work really well. Um, there are certain mods that add other creatures that make different kinds of string. Uh, so Natura, for example, which I don't actually have in this mod pack, will add uh, flame spiders uh, to the nether. So if you go kill those guys, they drop flame string instead of regular string. And you can use that for your crossbows too. Um, for the bolts, uh, the weight uh, controls how far they go. And the metal or the material of the, the uh, the bolt itself determines um, how likely it is to break. So if you shoot them and miss, sometimes the bolt will just land and you can go pick it up again, and sometimes the bolt will crack and break when it hits the ground and you won't be able to pick it up again. The really fascinating thing about these is that you can add moss to your bolts and it will repair the damage to the bolts. Well, actually, the damage of the bolts is just how many bolts are in the stack. So what you wind up doing is having an auto-refilling stack of bolts if you put the moss on it, which is fantastic. You never have to worry about making ammunition again. So here we are. We've made a crossbow. We've made some bolts. Uh, we've got the rest of our materials here. I'm going to now... Um, go get rid of some of this stuff because we've just about got everything we need in order to take our trip. Here I am back downstairs in my main area and I've got this little room off to the side here which I use to keep all of the things I need when I'm going on adventures. So here's my toolbox. I'm gonna grab my maniolin bolts which I've got moss on to auto repair and I've got lots of quartz on to make them do more damage, so plus seven attack damage instead of plus two. I'm going to grab my nice crossbow, which has uh, got slime for the bow, maniolin for the body. Uh, I forget exactly what the cross piece is, but uh, it's also got auto repair, and I used um, obsidian, which gives it reinforced three as one of its components, which means that uh, Every time it would have taken damage, there's a good chance that it actually just won't. So I've got that. I've also got my manual and cleaver, uh, which some of the components are slime, the handle. Some of the components are obsidian, I think one of the cross pieces. Uh, I've got lots of uh, quartz on it to make it do a lot more damage, and it's got some moss on it to make it auto repair. That gives it a total damage of plus 25 instead of plus 6 for a regular sword. Now, when I go to the uh, nether or go on any long trip, I also bring a couple of other supplies. Uh, first and foremost, my lunchbox, uh, the recipe for which is just a couple of iron uh, weighted pressure plates, and that gives you the lunchbox, which is actually really neat. Let's talk about that for a second. This comes from a mod called Spice of Life. If I just right click, it opens up and shows me the food that I've got. Not a whole lot of stuff. If I shift and right click, uh, it opens it up and leaves it open. And I can now just hold down and right click and it will eat a random item out of the lunchbox. While it's open, if I come over here and I right click on my chest full of food, and you can see I've filled this up with a lot of variety of foods, then it's going to fill itself up. Now I've got all sorts of things that I didn't have in there before because I'd eaten everything that was already in there. Um, Let's talk about food a little bit here. Uh, I mentioned before that I've got Harvestcraft and I've got Agricraft both installed on this server, which means I've got access to a tremendous variety of both raw foods that I can grow and foods that I can make. So battered sausage and beef jerky and blah, blah, blah. Now you'll notice on some of these it says nutritional value. That comes from the Spice of Life mod. This means that I've eaten a breaded pork chop at least once 
in the past 12 foods that I've eaten, which means if I eat it again too soon, then it's not going to cure as much of my hunger points as it might have done. If I hold down shift, you can see exactly what. Normally it would have done three, but it's only going to do two and a half or one and a half. Here's one that I haven't eaten recently, and you can see how instead of being red and showing me the parts that aren't going to work, it's showing me the full amount. And the same is true for all of these other foods. As I hold down shift, I can see how much they help me. Uh, okay, it looks like Caesar salad, same deal. I've already eaten some. It's not going to do as much for me. Which is why I've got so many different kinds of food in here. There's way more than 12. And whenever you use your lunchbox and right-click on a box with food in it, it's going to pick foods that you haven't eaten recently. So it's guaranteed that everything in there, if you have enough food, and a variety of food, is going to be stuff that you haven't eaten for a while. Now the lunchbox normally will pick up two of each item, but that means that you're going to be repeating yourself at least once. So I went in the configs and changed it so it only picks up one of each item carrying less food around with me, but I'm guaranteed not to waste any of it. You can always carry another lunchbox if you want to. Now that I've got myself covered for food, I've got myself covered for weapons. Uh, I've got my traveler's goggles with night vision so that I can see where I'm going. Uh, I've got my map in the form of journey map turned on, so once I get there I'll be able to set waypoints and figure out where I am. I've got myself some armor there's only a couple of other things that I want to bring along. First, I'm going to bring my charged porter. Uh, I talked about this in my last video. If I get in trouble, this is the thing that's going to get me out of there in a hurry. I'm also noticing that it's not quite charged all the way up. So before I go, I'm going to make sure to throw that in the charger for a bit. Matter of fact, let's do that right now. Toss it in. Starts getting some charge. And when it's done, it's actually going to shoot it up onto this uh, bibliocraft shelf on the top. So now I can grab that. And I'm going to grab these other items. So here's my traveler's gloves that I talked about before, my traveler's belt, and my knapsack, also from Traveler's uh, Tinker's Construct. You put those on by switching to your armor tab, and you can see that you've got a couple of extra slots here, and you just drop them into the right places. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what these things do for you. The knapsack adds another tab, which basically adds a whole other inventory's worth of stuff. And since it's tied to the knapsack, if you lose your knapsack and then uh, get it back again or make a new one, you'll actually get this inventory back again. So it's sort of a little bit like an ender chest. The uh, belt, now that I've got it on, I can press my hotkey, which is B for me, and switch out my whole um, hotbar. So I've kind of got an extra row of inventory that I can switch back and forth with one of my hotkeys. So now, finally, I've got everything I want to bring with me to the nether. Okay, now that we've got everything put together for our trip, uh, it's probably a good place to wrap up this video and save the actual trip to the nether for next time. So, as always, if there's something that uh, you want me to talk about some more, or something that uh, you think would make a good video in the future, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, talk to you later.